So, we're back for part two of the seeds. Glad to have you again. We ended off the last one with the coal crops. Cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower and the like. I'm going to start this one with lettuce. Lettuce grew excellent here last year. I had Tiber lettuce growing out in the garden. I had Prairie Island Coss growing, Early Great Lakes, and Cimarron. The head lettuce, the New York Iceberg, it didn't come to much. I think this year though, where I'm not going to be on to infrastructure as much, I will get a better hand on growing the head lettuce. It doesn't grow as easy as the leaf lettuce anyway. But it can, you can get a fair size head here, fairly easy if you take good care of it. These other two packets I have here is a romaine lettuce that was just a local store lettuce. I don't think I will be growing this one. There's no actual name variety on it and so I'll probably just throw out these seeds. Samaritan was actually a, I call it a complimentary gift, they call it a free gift from Heritage Harvest Seed. I had bought Amaranth from them to give them a try. I have some planted out there I planted in the fall. There are some seeds left in these two envelopes that I will be trying to start there in the little cups and plant them out after the last frost and see if I can get them to grow. However, there is a native plant which is pretty much considered a weed. But for the First Nations and the Aztecs, it was a grain plant, and you could eat the old plant. The leaves are used in place of spinach. When they're just about two, three inches tall, you can cut it off at ground level. The whole portion above the ground level, stem and all, you can eat. That plant is lamb's quarters. It's in the Goosefoot family. Um, around here it's known as pigweed. And you turn over soil anywhere and it'll grow. The seeds are all over. Last growing season, I had quite a large one grow out there beside the snowball bush. And at the end of the growing season, I brought it in, let it dry. And these are the seeds that I collected from it. So I am going to experiment with actually taking care of a lamb's quarter and seeing how big a, of a plant I can actually get and how much grain I can get. The seeds in this are used the same as the uh, quinoa. It says it has a nutty flavor and similar to that of quinoa and you cook it the same way as well. So the benefit of the, these plants is during the growing season you can harvest leaves and use them the same way you would use spinach. And then at the end of the growing season you get grain from it. If you don't want it to grow again where you planted it, don't let it go to seed. Because you'll never get rid of it. If it is growing up as a weed in your garden, when you're weeding, you're actually collecting dinner. So it's up to uh, one's own viewpoint, how they want to deal with it. Onion seeds now. Seed suppliers can be frustrating at times. Because they don't give you the full details of your seeds that you're buying. When I went on to Vessi's and I was attempting to find some onion seeds to buy, because this year I want to grow them from seed. There's a lot of YouTubers that say it's better to grow from seed because when you grow from set, they are artificially made dormant and onions are supposed to grow from seed to the full bulb in the one growing season. And I bought the three from Vessi's that they had. Only one of these is a bulb one. The Red Spring is the bulb one. 
early maturing variety has a fine neck, nice dark red color and medium strong skin. Larger bulbs can be slightly flattened. And then they add two shallots. The trouble is they don't say whether this is long day, short day, medium. In reality a seed supplier they could be getting their seeds from elsewhere so I can't say what this is. Neither on the packet nor on the website does it say. So I went searching and Ramier Seeds, I believe they're in the United States, they add three types of long day onions. The thing I like about these, they tell you whether it's heirloom or eye bread. They'll tell you in this case whether it's long day, short day or intermediate. And they'll also tell you the country of origin from where the seeds came from. There's a hundred seeds in a packet. I have Walla Walla, which I was kind of skeptical about. And I want about 600 onions. I can go through a lot of onions. So that means if I don't trust Walla Walla, then I need to get three packets of each of these. But, one ounce was the same price as three packets. So I bought an ounce. There's 9,000 seeds in an ounce. So that means I have 18,000 seeds in these two packets. There's 18,100. And plus I have this red spring. Shallots, I've never grown shallots before, so I don't know how they're going to grow. I'll I will find out. I have two sets of carrot seed here. And this one is four fifths full. This one is about a third full. These, I used them to plant last year. And as you probably know, carrot seed are not very big. So to have 250 milliliters of carrot seed, that's an awful lot of carrot seed. This bottle I know as excellent germination. These are the ones I grew last growing season. They were growing from purchased seed from the year before. So these are first generation Newfoundland seed. I have carrot planted out in the yard now to grow my second generation Newfoundland seed. It's Corliss Toucan. T-O-U-C-H-A-N. Or is it O-N? I think it's O-N. Beets is another traditional plant uh, growing here. If they grow well, it's usually around the middle of August we start harvesting beets. I bought a fair amount from Vessi's last spring because they last a long time. They will remain viable, that is. This bottle is almost half uh, full. I've got plenty of beet seed. And I just noticed on here, I said earlier that a seed supplier don't necessarily grow the seeds that they're selling. And these Detroit Dark Red, they are grown in the USA, packaged in Canada. And I bought them from Vessi's, which is a Canadian company. So these seeds came from the US. So where did the onion seeds come? They may have come from the southern U.S. for all I know and be a short day. That's the... If the supplier don't tell you, that's something that you really don't know unless you phone and press for the information. These are the honeydew melon. That's... 
this seed here is the ones that I collected from a store-bought honeydew the year before and I grew them out and I did get what was it four little honeydews in the last growing season you can check my uh, video melon harvest I believe it's called and you'll see how many of these I, I got not large ones they the largest one I think was about this size but it was delicious these are good seed I don't know the variety but they did produce good melons for me this is the musk melon the plants grew I had one fruit set but it didn't have enough time by the time it's set to uh, ripen. Now this year I've already got the cold frame made there as you probably know and so I'll have a head start plus they'll have warmer weather earlier. I should be able to get one fully mature this year. This is a watermelon that I bought to grow in the cold frame that's there beside the house. It's a better watermelon for growing here than the one I had last year. I did, however, from that larger watermelon that I had, I collected 320 seeds. That's what's in here. It was fully ripened. I did the sink test and, uh, and everything on them. These seeds should be viable. I think I'm going to try growing these in a couple of sun traps that I have on the property. You remember the pumpkin? I did weigh them out to get an idea of how many I have. There is a lot of seed there. When they dried, many of them had a cracked surface. So I thought they were ruined and that they would only be good for eating. And when I bit into it, I found out that the seed coat is in two layers and only the outside layer was cracked. The seed itself inside looked to be quite fine. Plus there's another coating outside of the seed. If it comes off it's just a little piece like that. So, I'm hoping that they are viable, and if they are, well, I can start a lot of plants. I can put them on a lot of different places on my property to see where they grow best. Now, let's do the Atlantic Giant. I bought this pumpkin, Baby Pan. It's one of those smaller pumpkins and the, they grow very well. A pumpkin that's rated for growing no more than 20 pounds can grow well here. They are heavy feeders, give them lots of nutrition. I once planted a one that's supposed to grow to 23 pounds beside my compost bin. I ended up with a 26 pound pumpkin, actually two or three of them, I don't remember how many it was. And when the flowers come out, the female flower, it produced so much nectar that it would run down and pool up in the bottom of the flower. And you could put your finger in and lick it. it was, and it was sweet. Peas grow here no trouble at all. I have the Oregon Sugar Pod Edible, edible Pod Snow Pea.
sugar snap that's your regular uh, edible pod pea. It's Oregon sugar too. Little Marvel. This is the one that I was given and I was talking about it in an earlier video that I am basically hoping to get a couple plants so that I can refresh the stock. It's an heirloom variety so I wanted to grow it out and get a refresh of new seed and then this year I could actually grow some to harvest and eat. Saber peas it's your regular green pea. <coughs> a sweet pea. They are delicious. They're my garden snack. And the Oregon Sugar 2 Snow Pod Pea. They have very big pods. And they are very delicious. I am not fond of the wax beans and the green beans that you get, but I do like quite a bit of the baking bean recipes. And that being said, from Vessie's I bought this. It's Jacob's Cattle, Black Turtle, and Soldier Baking Beans. I really hope that the seed I collected from that one eggplant is good. That's what's in here. I didn't have any seed left. And the very first plant that I, very first fruit that grew on my plant, I left that there right up until the frost touched. We had a couple of light frosts and it touched the fruit. So I picked all the fruit, then I fried most of them they were delicious and the oldest one of the bunch I collected the seed from so I'm hoping these seeds are good I really want to uh, grow them out again it's a Taiwanese heirloom eggplant ping tong long it can be grown in pots which I intend to do similar for the same reason that uh, peppers don't grow. Now I did get fruit off this one so they do grow a little better than peppers but I think it might be best for me to try to grow them in pots. This is the only one I have that I say I'm not going to be able to get anything out of it. What I'm doing with it though, I got them to document it. I'm going to plant corn in those solo cups and get them up about yay high and transplant them out. I'm also going to, after the last frost, set some seed directly in the ground. And I will document the growth of the corn with respect to the growing conditions. I will record all temperatures and moisture and whatever. And then compare it with what the universities in the United States are getting. Because they have some quite in-depth research done for corn. Corn was the only one I found that they really done in-depth research. There's some done for wheat, but corn is right from how long it takes to germinate, the first couple of leaves, when the tassel appears, when the silk appears, everything down step by step. So I'm going to see, document what grows here in Newfoundland and compare that with their research. I'm going to need to refresh my rutabaga seed. Whether I harvested the seed too early or was it the storage 
I don't know, but I have extremely poor germination with these seeds. I did get some grow. I've got three bags, a shopping bag full in the cellar, and I planted six of the best ones back to grow seed for next year. I have time to grow the seed. I harvested this, the seed mid-August, I believe it was. So I'll wait until the pods start to break open this year to be sure that the seed are ready. This is the traditional rutabaga that's growing here in Newfoundland, so I can get the seed down at the garden center in uh, Lewisport. It's Thompson Laurentian. Now for the purple top white globe, the turnip, it's a delicious turnip and uh, I don't know why a lot of people, they grow them for their uh, cattle and feed them to uh, cows and beef cattle and whatnot. But they are delicious. I was very impressed and these are the seeds that I grew in 2017. They germinated fairly well. I got quite a few. Now they grow quickly. So storing them over the winter, they're not a storage turnip. You just heat them as they come become available. I grew some more this past growing season and that's what's in here. So I have tons of seed for purple top white globe and they germinate fairly well. I have a tiny tim that I grew in the garden last year. We had a fairly warm summer and so I even had tomato seeds germinate out in the garden and got a couple of fruit off the first one that grew. But this one I started inside and I transplanted it outside around second week of June I believe it was. And so when the fruit got ripe, I collected some seed from that. These only, they're the only two flower seeds that I have. I have a Morning Glory, Heavenly Blue, and a Chinese Lantern. They were given to me by a friend. I didn't... Uh, grow them out last year because I was setting up the infrastructure but I might get a chance to actually grow them this year and apparently that's the end of the annual seeds that I have oh I ordered, went on to Elena's garden and ordered pepper seeds. I have two heirloom seeds, California Wonder and Sweet Shepherd. Heirloom, heirloom peppers from Elena's garden. And then I got a couple of uh, different sunflower seeds. That is the end of my seed collection for annuals. The only seeds there that is not within the reach of a gardener on the island of Newfoundland would be the corn and I think the amaranth as well they would be just a lesson in frustration the other one is the pumpkin if you want to grow pumpkin you'll be more successful with the smaller pumpkins the only one I didn't mention was potatoes. I am not aware of any potato variety that won't grow well here on the island. And that is it for my collection of annual plants now. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video.